Hi there, my name is Brandon with Thompson Heating and Air Conditioning. We're a heating and air conditioning contractor in Southern California. And the intention of this video is to help all the HVAC installers out there show you how we here in Southern California commission a Daikin fit system. Of course, we do everything accordingly to the installation manual, but we commission the system a little bit differently here to focus on moisture, humidity removal. We're not too extreme of a climate. Our temperature doesn't get too excessive. Most of the time we're focusing on moisture removal. We get a lot of monsoonal weather moving in during the summer months and we're really trying to control that latent heat, the, uh, the moisture content in the air inside of our homes. So right here we have a DH7 VSA 0601, a five ton, I call it the Daikin Advanced Series. It's a more energy efficient unit, kind of engineered and designed for extreme climates. So very hot, very cold environments. And when paired with the proper matching AHRI rated air handler inside of the home, it qualifies for the 25C federal tax credit. So I'm gonna get into all the meat and potatoes right now for the HVAC installers out there as far as how to properly commission a Daikin fit system through and through from beginning to end. We haven't even powered this unit on yet. Okay, here we go. First things first, read the manual, read the manual. After you've pressurized the system with nitrogen, after you've made your welds or your press connections, just to verify that there's no leaks in your piping, you're gonna pull a proper deep triple vacuum on the system, making sure that that third vacuum goes below 500 microns and holds nicely. Then from your vacuum, you're going to introduce the additional refrigerant charge that's needed based off of the refrigerant line set length. On this job site, we had 40 feet of refrigerant line set length. It's a 3 8 liquid line, but our suction line is 7 8 So according to this chart, we need to add 15 additional ounces of refrigerant to properly charge the system. So the factory charge, the condenser came charged with 162 ounces of refrigerant. We need to add an additional 15 ounces there's 16 ounces per pound, so almost one full pound, which will equate to 177 ounces in the system as a whole, which is 11.06 pounds. Keep in mind, we haven't even powered the system on yet. We just installed it, pulled a vacuum, and introduced 15 additional ounces of refrigerant from vacuum. It is also important to write that information for future service technicians so they know. Say there happens to be a massive refrigerant leak somewhere that is repairable and it gets repaired. So you don't have to go through these calculations again. What I usually do is take a Sharpie and write it on the inside of the door right here. So 177 ounces total. Next, we're going to power on the system and go through the Daikin One Touch commissioning features of the system. All right, so we just applied power to the air handler and the condenser. And now the Daikin One thermostat is starting up for the first time. Okay, I'm gonna guide you through the whole setup process. Welcome, select English. System is unitary. This thermostat is also applicable for S21 communication protocol, which is mini splits as well as um, D3Net, which is a P1, P2, a VRV. So we're unitary, I can fit. Setup menu, begin setup. Communication, unitary, Wi-Fi is disconnected. Let's select Wi-Fi. Networks, it's going to search for all networks. And in the customer phone, you would see one that is full bars. I'm not seeing one. So he likely doesn't have internet here yet. So we can't update the software on this thermostat. Go back, next step, language English, date and time will automatically set once it's set to Wi-Fi. Name the thermostat appropriately. Our customer's name is Brandon Long. So we'll just do Long. degree units, Fahrenheit. Now you can see it's searching for equipment. It's already found the air handler. We're gonna wait for that scroll wheel to completely finish, meaning the thermostat's um, done looking for equipment. But in the meantime, we are going to add a media filter, just quantity one. That way we can set an air filter replacement reminder at three months. 
So the timer in the thermostat will determine when the blower motor has ran for three months time and it will recommend filter replacement on the thermostat. And there's the system air I was referring to earlier, air number 11. System test required for startup. So we can't start it up until we do the system test. Let's go ahead and just move on. Once we're done with the test and it will redo all this anyway. System test. Test is running. This can take five to 15 minutes to complete. Okay, once test mode is finished, we can then go back. Now you can continue through all of these settings and then we'll come back to charge mode which is what we're going to enable to verify subcooling at the condenser. But for now, we'll go through the rest of these settings. Here under calibration, you could use a temperature probe to calibrate the temperature. You can also offset the humidity reading. In a situation where you want to focus more on moisture removal, you could trick the thermostat so the unit overcools to de dehumidify uh, more often. Next step. Cool heat, our minimum maximum set points, our dead band and overcool. We want to adjust that. We want to overcool by two degrees to dehumidify. And our dead band is effectively our differential in auto mode between heating and cooling. Four degrees is an appropriate dead band. You'll notice if you move overcooling to dehumidify to three degrees, the dead band will automatically change to five degrees. So we'll leave overcooled to dehumidify at two degrees and our temperature differential between heating and cooling in auto mode, the dead band at four degrees. Cooling boost mode. I don't like to enable cooling boost mode. Um, it doesn't get terribly hot. And if our customers are using their systems properly to maintain temperature, the system should never go into boost mode. So disable boost mode and disable heating boost mode. We want to commission the system to kind of operate on the minimal side of things. Air volume, refrigerant, boost mode. That way, if the customer reports back to us any comfort concerns, we can make adjustments to increase parameters. House settings, make sure quiet mode is off. We don't need quiet mode. The unit is quiet enough to begin with. This house is about 2,400 square feet. Dealer information. Reminders, media filter. So you give what it up for three months. Uh, jump. <laughs> I mean, you have a little bit of Here, you want to go up there? Now it's that. We'll complete setup. We go into the hamburger menu, settings, make sure schedule is off. The customer can always adjust their schedule. Make sure away is off and geofencing events is disabled. The display. English Fahrenheit, 90% brightness, night mode off, screensaver, set that to a digital clock, looks fancy, or the analog clock, sound on the thermostat is off, that's good, reminders, three month interval on the media filter, date and time will automatically adjust once it's connected to Wi-Fi, air quality, nothing to adjust there, humidity, target humidity, we do not have a humidifier on the system, so we'll take the 40% and drag it down to 25, but we'll dehumidify to 50%. We're overcooling by two degrees once we've thermally satisfied to focus on humidity removal. Energy is where the customer can connect to the utility demand response program. That's not for us to play with. Thermostat, you can see the information about the thermostat, so the information about the equipment. Support is all the information I input in dealer edit. Cloud services, we get one year for free. Change that to adjust settings so we can remotely log into the system and make adjustments. Now we need to go back into dealer edit to make some adjustments on the airflow side of things. So the code you click the I in the top right corner, all lowercase B-E-C-F is the code for this thermostat. B-E-C-C-C-F. Unlock thermostat, begin setup again to start from the beginning. Click heat pump, cool settings. Cool airflow trim. Click that. We're going to change lows to minus 15%, intermediate to minus 15%, and leave high fan speed at zero. 
that's offsetting the maximum amount of air volume the system is capable of moving in those three airflow volume parameters which overlap one another. The air volume profile, leave on profile D, that's the most, takes the longest to ramp up to full speed. Cool airflow on delay, we're gonna set it 20 seconds. You'll see 30 seconds is an available option, but the data refresh rate of the system is actually every 20 seconds. So sometimes if you set this to 30 seconds, you can actually get an error from the system when it's looking for the blower motor to be running, but maybe the blower motor is off because you have an on delay of the blower motor. So set that at 20 seconds. Cool airflow off delay. One minute is good while the coil is cool. Continue to cool the air that's passing across the coil. It's free air conditioning but you don't want to run the fan at too high of a volume for too long if the coil is still moist, because that air will pick up that moisture and rehumidify the air inside the home. So you can't adjust the maximum compressor revolutions per second, but you can offset the revolutions per second. So we're gonna leave that at the factory default 10 RPS. Once again, like I already specified, we want to set things kind of on the minimum parameters. So if the customer reports back to us with any comfort concerns, we can make adjustments accordingly to resolve. So we can bump this up to allow the compressor to work a little bit harder to move ref a little bit more refrigerant, but we're going to leave it at 10 revolutions per second. It's hard clicking the thermostat, standing off to the side. Dehumidification. Standard is default. But in a situation where maybe you have a house that's really close to the ocean, you might want to do A, which is max dehumidification with the widest operating range. Once again, let's commission this for the minimums with leaving us potential to make adjustments in the future if ever needed. So we'll leave this on as standard. And circulation selection is from the customers, the homeowner side of the thermostat, selecting fan, being able to choose high, medium, low, fan speed, and so forth. So that's the back end settings in cool mode. Now we need to go into heat mode. Do the same exact airflow trim, minus 15 for low, minus 15 for intermediate, and leave high at 0%. Heating airflow on delay, 20 seconds, 15 seconds. Heating airflow off delay, you can leave it at 30 seconds. Coil will cool off pretty quickly when we're heating. Defrost heat, backup defrost heat, like an electric resistive heat strip or a natural gas furnace in dual fuel applications. That's where you would enable that. We're a straight heat pump here. Defrost interval, you don't need to worry about that because we're not gonna defrost. And max compressor offset, 10 RPS. Okay, now back and back again. And those are all the settings we need to make. I like to just go next step, next step, next step. You could have gone back to this main menu and then complete some. Okay. Now the thermostat is fully commissioned. The system is ready to operate, but we still need to check the refrigerant charge via subcool. So we're gonna go back into the dealer edit. The code stays the same every time. You see that? B, E, C, F, unlock thermostat, begin setup, equipment setup, next, charge mode. We're gonna run test. This is gonna run the system at 100% to adjust the refrigerant charge. Now, if we did the software update, if the customer had Wi-Fi, this would actually run the system at 50% capacity for up to two hours. So yeah, can you just run test. Now the unit's gonna run in cool mode so we could double check the refrigerant charge via subcool. Look in the manual, the submittal data sheet, and you'll see that this unit requires a 10 degree subcool, my plus or minus one degree. All right. There's our Dyke and Fit condenser. This is running. We have our gauges connected, set for R32 refrigerant. So that's what the Daikin product utilizes. All right, compressor's just now turning on. So we're gonna start to see some differential pressures on the suction and discharge side. And I'll come back once the system's been running for about 30 minutes to evaluate the subcool reading. All right, the unit's been running for about 30 minutes now. Our subcool keeps bouncing around five to six. So we're just a little low 
on the refrigerant charge. And add a little bit of liquid into the suction line. Now R32 is a pure refrigerant. It doesn't need to be upside down to charge like Fortin A that was a blend. You can charge as a gas, a vapor, or as a liquid. But right, we're gonna do this conventionally through the suction side as a liquid, just a little bit at a time. Watch your uh, pressures, you don't wanna go too high. Close it off, let it sit for about 10 minutes to evaluate the pressures and it will calculate your subcool for you. As I already mentioned once, you don't need to worry about superheat. In any system with an EEV, an electronic expansion valve will modulate the superheat all on its own. All right, so now that the Daikin Fit system's properly charged, we're within one degree, um, subcool plus or minus of 10 degrees. We're gonna disconnect the tank and gauges from the unit. Disconnect your suction line. Okay, now that our system is done on charge mode, we can click stop, go back, and complete setup. Okay, so now what's left to do is to test cooling and to test heating. We already effectively tested cooling in charge mode, so let's just test heating. Okay, I'm gonna run the system for 10 to 15 minutes and test heating for the customer. All right, once you've tested heat mode, yep. you then test cool mode. Make sure everything's driving down. Working as it should. Okay.